that. So sustainability uh, is a concept involving the future of humanity over long periods of time. So the Grand Canyon, in a sense, provides us an opportunity to see the sense of geological time. Although it's formed relatively recently in geological ages, the bottom rocks are two billion years old. Can we think in terms of that time? Homo sapiens are only a hundred thousand years old. How would we think about the future in a hundred thousand years? We may in fact be a post human species. So this, even on this canyon, which is now a national park, we have seen uh, beautiful areas being mined for uranium and copper. The pollution from dust from the coal mines uh, clouded the air. It's now somewhat clearer than it was. So we're looking from the south rim of the Grand Canyon, and the north rim is 1,000 feet higher. Do human beings value nature? I think they do. This is one of the meccas for tourism. It shows that people do value nature. And that love of nature, that love of being part of nature, is something universal. There are people from all around the world. Morning, everybody. And I don't, I don't know what to say now about sustainability. Just to say that it is deserved to come here and um, if you, if you, with these views and with this landscape, uh, you can feel all, all, all the energy of the universe and feel, feel very happy. So, it is very nice. What sort of energy? Energy. So, the energy of the nature. Of the rocks. Of the rocks or the plants? Of everything together. And of the different colors and nuances of the rocks. Do you have any question? So in the Spanish traditions do you have any concepts of energy from rocks and plants? Energy. Yeah. And, uh, and how do you say in Spanish? Fuerza. Fuerza maybe in English you say strong or hard, I don't know, what do you say? Here at the, um, the rim of the Grand Canyon in Arizona, um, is there any lesson we can learn about sustainability by looking at this marvelous creation of nature? Yes, there is something that we can learn, which is that we are Humans are insignificant when we compare this. We have been here only a few hundred or few, I mean, few hundred thousand years when we compare this marvelous creation of nature. Just been here for the past 200 million years. So we should have some sense of uh, proportion when we think about humanity's role in shaping the environment, in, not in a sense of uh, betterment of nature, but we are driving this planet towards extinction in the sense of uh, our activities. Now, are there things that we can learn from here? Yes, we can, which is that if we want to change our policies about the way we want to progress, we want to develop, we should think that there would be consequences for our actions. So I would suggest that the getting this sense of awe of looking at this should give us the feeling that we need to preserve this magnificent earth and we should design our policies in such a way that even after, for not only for us, but our succeeding generation could also enjoy this planet and see this thing before we destroy this marvelous planet. Thank you. 
Any questions? <laughs> so in the Indian traditions, what's the sense of time for sustainability? Is it geological or biological or species or oh, short the time? Oh, the sense of time is geological. Like they think in terms of uh, yugas, that means that major eras of, uh, of the Earth's history. So we are in, in, you know, if you follow some of this Indian mythology, that we are in the, they say the Kali Yuga, which is something that they call this the, the worst period in humanity's history. Maybe they they think that we may not be doing the right things. So perhaps we need to think about our uh, the way that we conduct our business here. So we should um, perhaps avoid this destructive phase in our in humanity's history. So I think that's what the, the Indian tradition is. Not in terms of the present, but they think in terms of vast panoramic time in the, in the sense of... Uh, so that, uh, that gives us a proportion to think about us or actions. So that, that gives us the the sense of purpose that that gives us the humility that gives us the uh, the responsibility to uh, do things thinking that we we are here that we are we are the to keep this magnificent planet for uh, the succeeding generations to come to enjoy and to marvel at what uh, nature, the creation has provided for us. Not think just only for, for ourselves, so that, so that we, we should think sustainability from that perspective. So that is my humble lesson for, uh, for you to, uh, of today. And are human beings valued or is it preservation of nature is more important in the Indian tradition? Preservation of nature is more important. Of course humans have a role in that, but hu humans are just one of the um, perhaps an important uh, actor or, or, or stewardess, or steward, I should say, you know, in, this, uh, in this journey. And how does reincarnation fit in with our ideology? Well, I'm not an expert in that field. I, do, I wouldn't be able to say something authoritatively, so I defer that question to someone who knows more about it, our Buddhist colleagues here <laughs> from the island. Uh, from the reincarnation, yeah. yeah. So how do we value the pine trees? Are pine trees, because they live much longer than human beings, are they just as valuable? Yes, you can ask the pine trees. Maybe they might be able to tell us something. In the Spanish traditions, are pine trees valuable? Of course, all the trees, because they live a long time. And why everybody want to come here? Because we, we feel a lot of happy here. Because the nature, the nature help us to live the moment and uh, catch up our focus in the beauty, in the beauty landscape. So in terms of evaluation of biodiversity, we have aesthetic value and instrumental values and intrinsic values. Is the Grand Canyon value from an intrinsic sense because of its being here and the energy from the rocks or plants or their sentience? Or is it an instrumental value because human beings get pleasure and relax their soul from coming here? Is it just aesthetic value? I think it has got all the above. I think aesthetic value, a, a intrinsic value, it, it has got. Um, instrumental value in terms of uh, not just uh, you know we can walk down the trail and then enjoy this uh, magnificent uh, nature's creation in its at its best at, up close so it can be looked at from various perspectives points of view aesthetic point of view instrumental point of view an intrinsic point of view of, of its own worth in it itself. So what sort of fields would sustainability science do in regard to preservation of nature here? What sorts of research areas could we do that would be under the general theme of sustainability science? 
first lesson that sustainability science can learn from this uh, this wonder of, of the world is uh, how was this created? How did this happen? What sort of scientific principles went in the creation of this, this, this wonder? So perhaps there may be some lessons that we can learn. For example, how do these trees survive? Look at the way they precariously you know, hanging on the cliffs, but still they survive so well. So there may be lessons that we can learn from the, from the trees here, from the wildlife, from the rocks. So I would say that more, that would be the lesson that we can learn for, for sustainability science. And what how, how does life sustain here in this, in this environment? It looks rather harsh from, from our point of view, but it might not be uh, that way. So I think there may be uh, lessons that we can learn, scientific facts and uh, scientific knowledge that we can gather from this. Yeah. This, this marvelous. Wonder of the world. But in terms of uh, scientific knowledge that we can gather from uh, the nature here, it is unique. I mean, uh, it's an understatement to say it is unique. How do these uh, these trees survive in this environment? It is it is so it's so steep. There's hardly any soil here and still they thrive. That means that they have some special knowledge, some special skills, some special ability to survive under such conditions. So in a similar sense, human beings can also learn from nature. I'm sure that there's plenty of scientific knowledge out there that botanists and biologists have already studied. So for sustainability science, to gather that knowledge and design things, design, oh, develop policies could be something that we can look into in, sustain, in terms of sustainability science. Sustainability science is basically integration of knowledge from various spheres, right? Biology, sociology, um, zoology, and anthropology, and, 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 and such subjects, and even um, geology, for example, geological formations. So there, there are important lessons that we can learn from from this important uh, okay. site. And also it's a biodiversity hotspot. I mean, millions of uh, species of flora and fauna could be found here. So that's also an important source of information that we can gather. Mm -hmm. In Thailand, uh, the king has proposed a sustainable living. Right. Could you talk about that, Professor Chu uh, The king feel that uh, we have such a natural resources, so many natural resources around us. And the people in Thailand can live with this kind of a sustainable um, resources without depending on anything outside of the country. Had we depend on ourselves, there will be no problem in economics or uh, problem with uh, any kind of, uh, what do you call, uh, um, the problem with any how can I explain this? Well, the king thinks that the, right now the king is a model for the sustainable, sustainable uh, economy for the, whole, for the whole world. That we think that this is uh, necessary for us to survive. Have we used uh, a lot of uh, technology? Have we used a lot of uh, natural environment without uh, replacing it? Then we will have the problem with any kind of uh, non uh, with the uh, ecology problem. Now, uh, what I would like to present now is the surrounding with uh, this kind of environment. If you step into Grand Canyon, you will see that we can see the surrounding with all the stones and uh, natural surrounding that we have around us. It's a different thing that you have a different feeling when you step into a department store or anything that can create you more of the wanting and needing more. But when you sitting in a place like this, you feel the serenity and peacefulness. And this kind of thing that we, the modern time, need to have this kind of peace so that we can spend our life 
with the sufficient whatever we have around us. Um, I think that uh, it's very important for us to feel this contentment around the surrounding, around us, no matter where we are. Mm. And so, if, for example, we built uh, many man-made structures in this place, do you think it would spoil of the environment? Course. Of course. But if you have it well planned with the sustainable kind of uh, understanding the surrounding around us. But right now we madly plan all things to survive in order to um, for the only capitalism for those who want to invest and earn more money. But we never think of those around us. We never think of the small creatures that had been affected by our surrounding, by our uh, man-made, whatever we, ha we do. So I think man need to have more concern towards the natural environment and then man can be fully happy live in this on this earth rather than to damage the earth and use everything in for our own greediness mm. our own consum consuming society so I have a question for all our professors that, for example, this tree is a, a rather precarious position. Uh, so we know that in some time in the future it's going to fall off because erosion will happen. But if a person were to now push it by force, it could fall off to now. Is there, it still morally wrong to push it off now? just because in the erosion in the next yeah. five years it's going to fall off? Yeah. What is the, is it an evil for yeah, us to, to do that? Professor Daryl, because uh, we, we love nature, we will let nature work by itself instead of pushing it or try to damage it before time. Anything that go against nature, if you may put it that way, that it can damage the whole structure of nature as well. So what do our other colleagues think? Is it better to leave it to nature to die or does it make a difference if human mm. beings were to push it? Of course not, because every uh, human beings and nature, have, we are the same thing and we, we are the capacity to adapt, adapt to the context and this is called resilience. So this, probably this, this, um, this uh, tree has the sufficient that, that, that enough strength to survive forever for many 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 years so probably won't die ah, and this, this strength is inside every everyone and so, so it's evolved with nature you think it's not going to fall off in the next five years mm -hmm. okay what do you think well, Evenden? when we think about morality it's about uh, how uh, it's about ourselves. I mean, nature has no morality in the sense of how, whether nature th sees something is good or bad. It is something that we attribute to nature. So in that sense, what if we deliberately push this, this tree off from the cliff, of course it will fall off and die. But I think that would, that, that, that's a willful destruction of something for which we gain nothing. So that sense it's a morally wrong thing to do. Hmm. But from the tree's point of view, I don't oh, know. John, oh, oh, oh. I mean, Dario. From the tree's point of view, it's... Well, I mean, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it, it, maybe it wanted to live longer. I don't know. Hmm. So, it, one can get carried away. So, I think so the life and death of trees is a uh, part of a flow of nature. It's, it's, it, it, I would, I would uh, bring Peter Singer's argument here. I mean, it, you can expand our circle of concern. I mean, trees could also be brought in there. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, it provides um, some uh, shade to animals or others, or birds can perch on it, uh, or it can be something that's valuable to not only for us, but other creatures as well. And it has so in that sense, I think it is, uh, it, it, it shows 
some sort of moral depravity, maybe that's a strong term, but uh, it, I think we could say that it is the wrong thing to do. For people to yeah, destruct people to nature. To destroy nature. Yeah. Set fire, for example, to yes. forest. So yeah. it, it's, it falls under that category. Mm. So it has intrinsic worth. Yeah, it is indeed. Definitely. So, 25 years ago, you could see the uh, pollution from the coal-fired power plants coming through the canyon from Page in Arizona. Oh, really? Yeah. And now the pollution controls restrict that, so the sky is somewhat clearer than it was, and uh, less pollution, which is uh, good for the environment and yeah. good for the tourists and good for many of the natural creatures that are living here. So we have uh, many birds and other species. And we see also trees in different stages of decay. They get disease, but it's uh, natural in a sense. But climate change is going to change again the climate more rapidly than it has. So I think the dangers of a very fragile environment of climate change are clear. In addition, we can see in this last year, we have seen the um, effects of El Nino bringing a lot of rain. Yeah. And this uh, sort of six to eight year cycle of things is also makes us reflect because we're used to annual cycles because of our calculation. But ancestral people uh, living in these lands knew about this desert environment. They knew a six or eight year cycle, they migrated, they didn't put so much pressure on the environment. Um, but we so they could, are demanding uh, that. So it's some sort of long range planning in a way. I mean, it's even though they may have to think in terms of uh, how to ration their resources. Yes, so you have to prepare for a six or eight year cycle yeah. instead of a one year cycle. Yeah. It's a sort of... Build irrigation and uh, build uh, tanks where they can store water or some other such yeah. technology they might have uh, created some stuff. Or move away from this area to some other area, so you know, like, a, like um, hunter gatherers for example. They move other places and come back here maybe when so that could also come back yeah. yeah so it'd also be part of sustainability science uh, that social and historical aspects to Indeed. study yep. people's traditions and how they adapted to these environments and uh, whether climate patterns and we probably find more evidence of this yeah and we talk about traditional knowledge this is something that is uh, absolutely absolutely that well mm. how they survived so when we think about droughts, in one year there's no rain, we we become desperate, and mm. we we resort to short-term measures. Perhaps we need to we can learn from that, from how the people who lived here in this um, environment survived for thousands of years. So they have, they might have resorted to long-term planning mm. and relied on the resilience how they can survive. The world, the yes, a very important term. So for sustainability. So resilience over the long term is necessary. That's the sustainability. Survive in the nature. Survive. You have the strength, the force to to adapt. So who is made this canyon? This canyon is made because the river was the power of go around and survive. And we say that we are not the right to destroy the nature, but sometimes it's necessary to do this to survive. For example, sometimes human beings need cut trees to survive. So this is moral. If we're using it for survival? Yes, it, it, it is used this for survival. It is moral or not? So I think it is if we need, if we're part of an ecosystem. We can use parts of nature yeah. as long as we don't use too much. So sustainability would say 
uh, well, we could uh, not to use too much. Is that right? Yeah. Use sustainably so that uh, there would be enough trees for us to work for tomorrow and for other people. So then we will, then we will destroy, destroy all this environment to survive. For the river's resilience. Yes. It's beautiful now. As a consequence of uh, it's a destruction. Beautiful consequence. So nature includes all the elements and together the product we can appreciate. Now look at the berries on these. These are no doubt used by food for some creatures. So we can pick berries without destroying the tree. Birds can eat. This is uh, used to, useful. So, what about other species? Could we say that more sustainable species leave their host and don't destroy it? And parasites or those who completely destroy the environment, like dead trees, yeah. are they more evil? There's a concept of evil in this disease, for example, in this tree. Some part of it is sick and others are not. How do we deal with that, the problem of disease? I, mean, I, I don't know whether we could introduce the, the term evil here. I think, it, I think something that is done deliberately for the purpose of destruction is what is evil. In nature, I don't know whether there is anything called evil, because that is the very nature of uh, how living one organism lives of another organism. That's the way it uh, survives. I mean, there's sometimes there is some sort of symbiotic relationship. By hosting one, one organism, the other organism uh, gains something. So there is something that uh, we can learn from nature as well. So I would not personally use the concept of evil in, among uh, for disease of for disease and things like that. I mean, that's the way things are. I mean, there may be something that we might be able to do to prevent it if it, that is going to lead to ultimate destruction of a large with the um, forest, for example, as a result of uh, one organism that doing that. Uh, perhaps that might be an introduced organism. And that might be. So uh, that's who I see it. Maybe there may be others who might differ with my view. Ah. The concept of oh, evil uh, is a, a concept invited, created by human beings. It's a religious concept. So probably, I, I with the Darwin concept of evolution, probably nature don't need this tree because there are more trees, more valuables here. And this is the reason of his disease. Mm. So for the crow who's just flown by yeah. to capture the mice, for them, the mice perspective, they may be evil because it means the end of their life. But from an ecological, ecocentric perspective, it is not. Yep. Yeah. What do you mean? Ah, I want to continue a little bit more about the Thai kings on the sustainable development of Thailand. The king, since he traveled so much to the province area, he saw the great big difference between the rich and the poor. And he also want to create a sustainable for the poor, not just only to give them the, the money, or, but to teach them how to survive. That is more important. Learning how to teach them to survive. Uh, mm -hmm. It means that to give them tools in order for them to be able to stand them on their own feet. And that means that they are able to do their own agriculture, uh, their own piece of land. For yeah. example, he said that within uh, 10 right of land, 
a ten line of land. If you decide, they divided land into different parts. One part will be you can dig a pound upon the land, so that when it rains, the pound can give water to the people. You will have because he realized that water is the most important part for anyone to survive. To have the water, you can have agriculture around the the land, and then you can live. Uh, you have a couple of uh, chicken and couple of uh, ducks, cows, buffalo, in order to survive. And this is a sustainable way of life. Now the king introduced this to the people, and their example nearby Bohin and nearby Kangkajan. There's a there's a place where. They have such kind of uh, provision of the king to to uh, and the program Chang Huo Man at Huo Hin that you can see that he give the land and the people and the flowers and trees so that they learn how to have the system. So he realized that the lack of knowledge is the worst thing that people can have. How to give them knowledge is to provide them the ways of life that they can live by themselves. Now, um, even though the Thai people learn how to survive, but right now there are many foreigners who like to go to Thailand, get married with the Thai girls, and then start their own land. There was an interview of a, a young British man who, did, who married with a Thai lady. And he said that coming here with the land for two right or three right, he can survive well with make growing trees. And he can see that growing trees in Thailand, it just grows just like that. And now he's doing his own field and his own, uh, he has his own buffalo and planting on the rice, rice field. And he feels that that is a uh, the happiest uh, type of life, in the way the way he lived, then is a uh, is a life that he dream of. That this is a life that he think that is a uh, proper for anyone to live on his his piece of land, has his own chicken, has his own egg, and able to survive well without going to the market and get anything from the from the supermarket. So it depends on what do you want from life, you know has to come back to the same question. Uh, what is uh, the meaning of life? If you can survive well with necessity of life, that it means that you are able to be content of what you are doing. But right now with the modern way of life, we have so all kinds of propaganda, all kinds of uh, uh, wanting and needing more of what we have. And uh, we can be satisfied of what we have. So this is uh, what we need to learn how to live a new way of life. And I found out that in some part of America, there start to be, have a new kind of village that you don't need car, you just need a bicycle around the village. You don't have a television, but you have books. You have people to gather around and discuss ideas together. This is a new trend that happened in America 20 years ago. I don't know what, when that will be in Thailand with such a uh, 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 content way of living. I think it's, uh, this is a way that we have to think for our future, for our next generation, that whatever we have here, we have to change somehow for the better to, for the next generation to come. Now you raise a very important point. The living of poorer people in the environment, because in order to preserve national parks, Many governments, including the Thai government, as others, try to have a difficulty to resolve the sustainable living of indigenous people in the environment because they will use some resources. And we talked about this question, using the nuts, using what is needed. And that was the part of the, the theme we've been discussing. But how do we resolve the issue of indigenous people living in national parks? Can they continue to live there? Can poor people live in an area of forest where they, the tradition is there, but they're going to use some of the resources of nature? I think that the problem that is most crucial to the Thais and to anyone at all is, uh, 
education. You got to give the knowledge to the people. Why they can't do this? Why they can't burn the land? Why they can't uh, uh, grow this kind of thing? How would it affect the whole society? But the process of giving education or knowledge to the people is the most difficult thing. You got to find the right person. For example, uh, Lydia, Lai Lai, Lai Lai, sorry, Lai Lai is the one who teach the teacher how to teach. I think it's the uh, most important thing to any country at all, how to teach the right thing to the right people, you know, before they turn it off. And then, uh, if you have a bad education, for example, right now Thailand is facing a, a real problem in education because we are almost at the end, at the end of the 10 country of the ASEAN, the, almost the last one. So we need to boost up our own education. And before we do that, we have to <laughs> change the kind of, what kind of administration you have. And this is a whole total problem that the whole country have to be aware of the problem. So if everyone is aware of the problem, then you have to change the structure of the society. You have to change the structure of the politics, uh, the way how to lead the people. So education is a root and it takes a long time. Mm. So, in the past, what was the form of education for people, for parents, for grandparents to teach their children to live sustainably? Oh, yeah. And so, some in some cultures we see uh, it passed through spiritual leaders, and in others we see this as a thing that every family should be teaching. Um, in some cultures, we have a medicinal medicine people medicinal healers, medicine man, uh, wise women's yeah. oracles of the future, mm -hmm. these uh, fortune tellers thinking about the future as well. Usually these were bastions of this knowledge. Um, wow. And how does the formal edu education replace that? Because it seems like mm -hmm. in many countries decolonization is necessary. The colonized nation has taken away that knowledge and that education system. Right. How do we bring that back? Okay. Now you're talking about the whole history of humankind, of humans since the 11th century. That uh, if for, for my country, King Rama V is the one who brings the Western, the Western ideas into the Thai. And bringing that ideas, we start to kind of schooling to the whole society. You have to finish school from this age to that age. Before that, we learn from parents passing down from generation to generation. And whether it's good in, in the way that it can give the people the knowledge that passing down from the parents, grandparents to the next kin. And, and that's where you don't lose the, the power of knowledge that passing down for so many generations. But then right now the idea of education that you have to have this kind of degree and that kind of degree in order to show that what knowledge do you have. So you forget all kinds of uh, the traditional knowledge that long before. So right now we have some kind of a preservation uh, research center for those uh, medical medicine, or but we never investigate really uh, into the the real um, rural area. Certain kind of belief that they have. Uh -huh. uh, so, I forgot your question. Mm. You've answered it in the meantime, but <laughs> in fact, uh, I'd like the, the, dean, the Dean of the AUSN, who's the Director of the School of Sustainability Science and Knowledge Traditions, to make some comments, given them, because this knowledge traditions aspect has been critical, isn't it, as you've, yes, as you've just raised before. I, I can add a little bit more to uh, my colleagues' comments here. The idea is not to completely replace modern education with what we had before, traditional education, but the best thing would be to, to integrate the best of both and come up with an integrated approach to solving the problems. More focused on the, the problems and how we can address those problems rather than just pass on knowledge just for the sake of knowledge. I mean, more in terms of uh, taking the best of modern knowledge. There, there, there's a lot that we can learn from that. Not everything, 
and also a lot from the traditional ones that we can learn and create that sort of uh, synthetic, if that's what uh, one can find. So that is our approach in this uh, Institute of Sustainability Science and Traditional mm. Systems. So I'd like to ask Professor Lopez, so when teaching school teachers, what forms of knowledge to teach? In most modern countries, school teachers are not taught about indigenous value systems. What do you think? How can we modify that? In general, they don't speak about this in a transversal, in a transversal way. The, there is, I think, a subject, a special subject, a specific subject is to speak about this, but not a transversal general education in the schools. Mm. Can we think of any examples where school teachers are teaching traditional knowledge now? It's something which I think we have to work on if we can train teachers of teachers and future professors uh, and also build up maybe texts and resources that are easier to use. Well, in Thailand we have a traditional Thai massage and, uh, and that's can be passed down very well to the new generation because they can bring that into the well-known Thai massage. And besides, it's a Thai food, you know, Thai uh, traditional food, and, and also, but not so much of the Thai traditional, what do you call, morality or a culture that is kind of get lost because we are more westernized in many ways. Mm. And to westernize in a way that you forgot what is a real Thai traditional belief mm. in their own tradition. So although it's not formally colonized, ideologically it's yeah. colonized. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And but and also traditional medicines are important, yeah? Mm. Right. You right. we have some of this preservation perhaps because people are sick and they need to get better. So that tradition in some sense has lasted longer than some of the other traditions. And if we think about the traditional environmental sustainability knowledge, these systems have really found it difficult to survive. Uh, whereas traditional medicines are a bit more preserved because people, uh, poor people just cannot access expensive pharmaceuticals. And uh, perhaps the environment has been controlled and taken over by companies and other places. In fact, down in the bottom of a canyon, there are uranium and copper mines still there, which are, of course are no longer working, but are trying to decontaminate the pollution caused by them. Uh, if it hadn't, and it's interesting, you know, even in this beautiful place, the uh, instrumental value of nature uh, was valued. That people, companies came in, and we learned that the Cole Brothers studio was actually opened on the Cameron uh, mining estate. Yeah. Uh, this town of Cameron is still the name for the next town, the uh, in Navajo Nation, but it's based. It's named after the miners, and they came here to mine because they thought that with the opening up of the rocks you can get the different uh, ore elements very easily out of the side of a hill. Uh, fortunately, uh, the aesthetic value has changed. Um, maybe at that time the instrumentalization of nature was something very uh, important in the 18th and 19th century and still continuing. Um, and also, it was it was uh, a lesson that uh, we can learn from what happened here. They thought that tourism would bring even more income and jobs to this region rather than mining. So, which has been proven right, and it has yeah. become enormously successful as a sustainable tourism project. If you want to use that term, mm. and, uh, and it is highly destructive of what nature has created, instead uh, tourism can create the jobs to preserve this, mm. this, uh, this magnificent... Uh, so sustainable uh, tourism in a sense, yeah. can a lesson is one of the big lessons from the Grand Canyon. Absolutely. And uh, we can hear the cars going past as with, hmm. but the access, providing access for tourists. Some parts of the canyon, yeah. uh, they control the traffic through uh, you know, gas-powered uh, buses. In the future, these will be electric-powered and solar-powered buses. So this, again, providing sustainable access for tourists. 
Uh, ecotourism is another question. Yeah. In a sense, it's yeah. people who go down, down the bottom of a canyon, clearly an ecological experience. And a lot of these paths along the side of the hill here, these are ecological, yeah, that you uh, can walk along, yeah. see the plants, see the animals. Um, regarding with the education, uh, ecological education, uh, I go back to the same idea. Who is be able to take care of the nature? Uh, is, is be able to care of the nature, uh, which is be able to, care, to take care of himself, because we are totally fused with the nature. If you are not happy, if you are an angry person and suffer a lot, you can keep the nature. So mm. it, is, it is a big connection between us and between how we care uh, ourselves, ourselves and how we care take care of the nature. So that knowledge sense coming from nature, living with nature, part of nature, uh, helps us to become whole and uh, live sustainably for ourselves. And so sustainability includes this concept not only of those things outside the environment, but human beings themselves who are thinking about it and how to live. Mm. So here you can see traditional knowledge, lichens used for treating sore gums and toothaches when powdered. Pinions uh, for eating, for food, but also the pitch could be used to protect cuts and sores from exposure to the air. Yucca is used for many things. Fruit of yucca. It is Rato's ham. Rato the ham, sir. Right. You see, the living quarter of the American Indian in the old days, we can sense the simplicity of life. And the more simple, the better, the, better, the better we become. There's a poem by the Shakers called Simplicity. He said, it's a gift to be simple, it's a gift to be free, it's a gift to belong where we ought to be. But right now we have so many layers of life that we think that what is, what is the best kind of life. And to find out what is a good life is something that you have to answer to yourself, what is a good life. In the Greek tradition way of thinking is that the self-knowledge. To have the self-knowledge means that one has to introspect within oneself through a certain kind of dialogue, whether with other person or with yourself. And with a similarly uh, peaceful environment like this, it can lead you to have a better understanding of the self because this dialogue can happen in peaceful atmosphere or you can have any dialogue any, anywhere if you have a certain kind of people you can talk with, exchanging ideas together, like we are doing in this uh, university. When people bring some ideas in, then you can develop your ideas to, for the better. But the introspection of oneself needs to be... Um, it means that you, have, you can use any time of your life to introspect upon the surrounding, upon your inner, inner life, yourself, that you look through it. When you look through certain things and able to understand that within yourself, it means you are able to answer the question that you can have towards your own life. What sorts of questions? For example, why, why are we here? What kind of life you want to live? What is good for oneself? If we cannot answer that kind of question, how can we go on living? So, uh, to know, in other words, know thyself that Socrates has introduced 
long time ago is what we should have at the present moment because many times you have so many things in your life but you never satisfy what you have. Socrates once said that if you cannot find what is what you can be satisfied with yourself, you cannot find your own happiness. Another another words of putting is is that unsatisfying and uns unsatisfaction way of life is not worth living. In other words, if you never find the answer or you never ask such a question to understand who you are, why you're doing here and what direction you are taking, then you are in in the in the a certain kind of trouble because you can probably go the wrong direction or you are just like a boat floating on the stream without any direction you can go anywhere so to finding who you are what kind of life you want to live is a very important way to exist mm -hmm. mm. what do you think i i totally agree with with her um, there is a, a psychological theory called uh, consciousness, consciousness th uh, theory that say that all people that uh, live a, a good life uh, is conscience, conscience, and a, bal a balanced life and live live the present is is be able to survive. And there are a lot of there are uh, several uh, research studies that say that uh, cancer is co the, the, the first cause of uh, cancer is caused by the suffering of the people. So what is sustainabil sustainability? The sustainability is, is uh, balance, balance inside and balance, uh, balance to keep the balance outside in the nature, to be able, be able to live the present consciousness uh, in a right way. So if we are, if human beings are be able to do this, the sustainability outside is possible. So this is the, this is the key. Mm. To live in a balanced way. Yes. Right. So we, we, we need to start uh, by this, with this. We need to resume our balanced life. Yes. And it is equanimity, more... Equanimity. Life. And do you think we've lost a balance in modern way of living? Yes, when we attach to material things, when we um, when we uh, keep away from the nature, we forget that we have. We have. We we are very simple. We are just energy, and we don't need too much to live properly. When we we forget this. We we lost the balance with ourselves and with all around us. Mm. Mm. So balance is critical for sustainability too, is it? Yes. Mm. Balance is the key word in sustainability. Sustainability is val is balance. Yeah. It's the same concept. Oh, so, um, we usually say ignorance is bliss, but ignorance is dangerous because ignorance is what creates all the problems that we have. Just for example, um, perhaps it may not be good for the video, but anyway, I'll say a gentleman and his wife were passing and they were, he was saying there was a ruin, a uh, scientific knowledge to date tree dating. The man was telling his wife, you heard about speed dating. Tree dating means that uh, dating for long <laughs> lasting relationship. <laughs> <laughs> May not be the right sort of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. But most well, even some people doubt the you yeah. know carbon dating and geological yeah, dating. Exactly. So we well, didn't even uh, know what tree rings mean. <laughs> Yeah. To uh, find out, finding out about how long certain ruins might be. You know? yeah. yeah. So, how old do you think these ruins are? This is about 1,100 years old, mm. according to the uh, the 
the trees that they used for building the beams for the houses they built. Mm. And uh, according to the uh, records, the ruins they found, these dwellings were built around 1100 AD. And we have very good scientific evidence to show that, prove that. For example, this tree here, for example, is uh, saying that it might be about 1100 years old. This tree itself? The tree in front of you is a Utah juniper, found today at elevations between 3000 and that. Utah juniper was used by ancestry pilgrims, and those were the main beams for their dwellings. But this might, we don't know whether it might be. Mm. So mo matching the overlapping patterns here, they can, uh, in the different branches, so they can see and match these patterns, as you can see. It's a bit like matching pieces of DNA together now. Yeah, and also yeah. The, the nature of the ring can also tell a lot about the climate. Mm. You know, if there's thin lines, that means that must be a dry season. Dry. If it is thicker, that means there was a lot of water. So yep. that's, that's an interesting uh, Yes, so we can see in these, uh, that refers to what we were talking about, the years of pattern of yep. weather, and yep. we can use those tree rings as so one method. Here, for example, that is longer. Yeah. So that must have been a year where they had lots of rain. Yep, or a milder winter. Yeah, or a milder winter, something that is narrow, for example. Mm. It's a dry year. And so this knowledge we talked about before, we can see the plants uh, that they used. And so in a sense, this is called nature's supermarket. The food for the pebble came from different sorts of plants. Hundreds and hundreds of plants. <coughs> so what sorts of plants can we see in here? The gathering loop. Where did you go for food? So this is a shopping for the nature, natural things. So this is the same in most cultures as well. Yeah? We use uh, natural resources. Natural resources. And, and for someone like us, coming from a, a much more tropical, I mean, for me, area, I would find this place to be barren. But uh, that is my first impression, which is incorrect. In fact, you can find a lot of useful uh, trees and berries and bushes and, and plants. Medicine plants, medicine yeah. plants. Here, here. Yeah. I see. So people can find a way. Yeah. That's why they're living there in the pinyon pines. And they're nuts. So is the tropical environment easier to sustain? Do you think? I think so, yeah. You think so? Yeah. So you have more room for mistakes? No. I mean, also more room for diseases as well. But you can find more the food items, the water, shade trees. Yeah. It's a very yeah. fragile environment here. So do you have sage bush in India? Sage. I think they have uh, different species of sage. Smells good? Yeah. And it's used for spiritual cleansing as well. This has an unusually interesting smell. We can't record the smell on the um, video. Boiled for dye, pass over in the baskets. Mm -hmm. Leaves burned for cleansing during ceremonies. Mm. Oh, yeah. So also they had a spirituality, the kiva here, and looking out to the mountains, the holy mountains in the south, sport timbers, so giving gratefulness for the harvest and uh, discussion of the questions we've been discussing, the meaning of life and what is the value of nature. Uh, you, you, you know that the nature, uh, 
tank and sometimes we need the fire and sometimes destroying some corals so but this fisher needs to survive need to feed the families so please keep to understand that but in a sense if we can do that with while retaining the resilience of nature to try to in the future provide also the resources that we have. So for example, if for fishing we might have a size limits. We might only take uh, fish at certain times of the season. We might forbid to take fish when uh, uh, they're carrying eggs. Yes, I agree. So but sometimes there are not another alternatives or, there are, or these alternatives are not easy. And these people need to eat. Mm. And need to eat every day. But yes, of course, we need for alternatives, mm. for not destroy, not not change, don't change this nature. Yeah. But sometimes it's, to the, it's very difficult. So to survive now, in this moment, is it more important? Or is it better that we it's keep not. some for the future? So we might accept some adults to die, but the children have to live. It's not a more important priority is a priority setting priorities is important setting priorities is important thinking in the future too so the little colorado has eroded the canyon quite dramatically right. so somehow the progress will erode our values and cultures. We need to still sus sustain it. It still supplies life, even though it's quite different to the original community. So in that world, it's all 